Hi there, this is Dr. Wolf. Real quick, we're going to do a tutorial in R with R Studio on how to evaluate a variable or a user entry using if statements. If statements allow us to execute code based upon a variable's value um, and skip over code if the value doesn't match. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to save a little bit of time is I'm just going to put a prompt in that asks the user to enter a number. So I'll put a comment in with the pound symbol. All right. And then I'm going to copy some code in from one of my previous tutorials that basically says set up a variable called IMP users number, set that equal to, and in R you can use the equal sign or you can use this little less than in a dash for assignment. It says read line prompt for a number. I'm going to put a little colon and a space there just for um, presentation when it comes up. Now what we want to do is evaluate the user's entry with an if statement. So we're going to use a simple if statement that's going to check the value of this variable. So I'll put another comment in. And this if statement is going to be pretty simple. Okay, It's going to say if the user's input is greater than 1, all right, we're going to use curly braces now, all right, just like almost like the Java language in this case. We're going to print a statement out to the console, and here we would put in other code of whatever behavior we wanted to take, but just for demonstration purposes, just a message. We're going to print out it's greater than 1. Okay, That's only if that number is truly greater than 1 that the user entered. Now, with if statements, sometimes we'll typically do an alternative scenario. What do we want to happen if it's not greater than 1? Well, and with an if statement, you can do an else. Okay, So we can do an else block here, and I'll just paste that in as well, where it says print out the number is not greater than 1 in this case. Okay, So here, when we run this code, we're going to ask the user for input. The user's input is going to be evaluated here in this if statement and print out one or two of these messages. So what I'm going to do to run this, I'm going to run it line by line just so you can see it down in the console. So I'm going to put my cursor up there on line 2. Click the run statement that's going to run the current line. You'll see it ask me for the number. Be careful that you click down here. If you don't, you'll likely type in your code, um, which you don't want to do. So you want to type your number in, go back and click run and you'll see the next line and then eventually you click run it evaluates the next if block you'll see I entered a 10 the if block got evaluated and it says your number is greater than 1 alright so that shows that the first condition was true so it handled this condition and printed out the message I'm going to put my cursor back on line 2 one more time and hit run I'm going to enter a 0 this time and hit run and we'll see that my number is not greater than 1. All right. So that's basically how you do a simple if statement. Now, you can do basically multiple conditions using else ifs in R. And let's see what that looks like. So in this case, we're going to do if my number is greater than 10, then we're going to print this first statement, your number is greater than 10. And I'm going to go down and do another else if statement here. So right after this curly brace, we're going to type in else space if. We'll do input user's number is greater than 5 in this case. Okay. We're going to print a message out. And we'll bring this else up on this line. We'll copy paste. Your number is not greater than 10, but it is greater than 5. Okay, so we're going to clean that up here. Um, we're going to check our parentheses. We have a little underline error message. We want to get that closing parenthesis in there. So now you'll see basically what's happening here is that 
If it's greater than 10, number's greater than 10. If it's greater than 5, it's going to print this message. Otherwise, it's going to fall down here and say your number is not greater than 10 or, or 5. Okay, So we're going to run those through those conditions in this testing statement. So let's do our prompt here on line 2 and click Run and enter a number. Let's click down here and put in the number 6 and click Run. And you'll see your number is is greater than 10 is gets what's prompt out. And then you wonder to yourself, how did that happen in terms of this if statement? Well, that's very interesting. So we see that my variable over here is a 6. And over here it evaluates and it falls into that if statement. How did that happen? Well, the reason that happened is due to a data type problem in this if statement, which is always interesting when you're evaluating numerics versus characters. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to you for another video, and I did that intentionally just so you know that there's evaluation concerns when you work with user input and different data types. So nothing here is telling this that this is actually an integer value. Even though we're trying to treat it like one, we or it's not truly not evaluating properly there. So we're going to clean this up. We're going to click the little broom there. Okay. And we're going to click the broom here. And we're going to get rid of our variable there. So our environment's empty. And we're going to change this to enter a letter. And I'm going to finish just showing you the else and the else if. So we're going to change this to instead of equal to A, we're going to say if user input is equal to A, and we're going to say input user letter as our variable. I'm just going to change this around a little bit. All right, and then we're going to say equal to B. And then here, if it's not an A or B, we're going to say you did not enter a A or a B. And here we'll say you entered a B. And here you entered an A. Okay, so we're going to evaluate this and just see if the if, the else, and all works as we had hoped. So let's run this statement. Enter a letter, A, run. You entered an A. Let's run it through again. B, run. You entered a B. Okay, and then let's run it through a third time. C, and again, careful that you click down below. C, and you did not enter an A or a B. So that's how the if, the else if, and the else statement all work in conjunction. Now, you can do multiple conditions in your if blocks for evaluation. You could do something like this. If user input is equal to an A, um, or user input is equal to a B, we can say you entered an A or a B. Okay. Here we can say the C A a B or a C. So let's just evaluate it one more time and let's see what happens when we run that and hit that first condition. So we'll run it. We will put in a B and you'll see it said you entered an A or a B. So you can do compound conditions um, in here with side of parentheses. If you have ands and ors or for really a complex condition, be careful with those parentheses. But this is how you do if statements in R. If you want to see how to convert user input from 
being evaluated as a character to numeric type of value. Um, I'll show you that here if you're still listening to the tutorial as one final thing. But the tip here is basically take the user input and you just convert it over. So if we say, um, let's just say int user letter in this case, even though the variable name doesn't make much sense because we wouldn't want to turn a letter to it. Let's basically take imp user letter dot numeric, okay, and we just do this, okay, so we just do as dot numeric, my apologies, not the variable name dot numeric, but as is the library, okay, and you paste in your variable there. So this line, just so you have it, converts user input to a numeric entry. So if we went back to our original test condi condition of checking the 10 um, and the 6 properly, where I went to when I built in the else statement, you would have had to do this here because it was evaluating as a character based input because we never converted it. So that's how you would convert it if you need to. I hope this R tutorial helps you work with if statements. Feel free to put comments below if you should have any or questions. I hope you subscribe for future updates on R plus many other tutorials on my channel. Thank you for watching.